Hey guys, in this video we're going to do some SWAT for map making. So I'm going to, I'm opening up my SWAT for editor. I think you find this in the system directory of your expansion pack or or what or your original SWAT directory. Okay, so I'm just going to expand my dynamic viewport here and we're going to click on the brush to generate a default size brush 256 by 256 by 256 and we're going to resize it using the actor scaling. So this brush is going to allow us to cut out some rooms into the world. Uh, I think they're called CSG operati uh, operations and we're basically building a BSB. I don't know if that's what it's called in um, the Unreal editing but that's what I have called it before and we're going to subtract this into the world. If you resize your brush in a way that it negates itself you're not going to be able to subtract it properly. So make sure that you, re you resize it right. Okay, and we're going to make two rooms. So I have this planned ahead of time like I should have. And whenever you're making your maps, you want to make your PSB first or whatever you want to call it. And then go into your textures and then your static meshes and then your Havoc actors and then your scripts and then your pathing. Well, pathing might come before some of that stuff, but you get the point. So we're going to make a door frame. The door frame is going to be a standard size. It's going to be 160 by 80 by 16. This is the exact size that it is in other maps for a single door. You've got your single doors and your double doors, and that's about it. So I'm just going to place it. We're going to use um, the other viewports to place it. You want to make sure that you place it with precision, otherwise you're not going to um, you're going to have really weird seams and stuff in your map. Oh yeah, I'm working on another scripted shooting range, uh, so it's basically going to be something that where you actually walk through the map and certain targets light up and you have to shoot them and they'll delight and then after about a second another target's going to show up uh, or it's going to be lit up and you shoot that and you move on and you keep moving on and it's supposed to be like a speed kind of thing where you you're practicing uh, fast snap shooting and moving along the map fast should be pretty cool I also want to make like an overkill map where you just have a lot of pawns and you're in like an arena and you just kill a bunch of people those are two maps that are needed in SWAT that aren't there because everybody just likes to kill people every once in a while even if it, you're a police officer okay so let's subtract this door frame and add a smaller room so I'm going to reset the size of this cube, this brush cube and this will be our smaller room could be like a bathroom or something Okay, it's aligned. I'm going to zoom out and subtract it. And it looks good. Now let's open up our texture browser. So you've got your browsers up here. Basically, whatever you click up here that's a browser, it's going to open up the same window being the group browser. And, um, what is it? I think the group browser is actually this actor groups tab. But anyways, it's going to open up the same window every time. Just it's going to select different tabs. And so you've got your classes. So that's what you have to choose from for actors that you can add to the map. You can even add things to your, your map that aren't placeable. So unplaceable and pure native stuff. I don't think you should really be doing that unless you are very familiar with the Unreal Engine and whatnot. Uh, for the most part, you just need this the placeable stuff. And sometimes you're going to have to load packages manually uh, to get certain things to display uh, in this window. And then you've got your actor groups. That's the stuff, all the actors that are on your map. Down here, you've got your groups that you can make and lock up so that you can move them as one thing, move and rotate them as one thing. And you can't edit them in, edit, and you can't edit the elements individually which this is pretty important to for a level of, of abstraction in your map making 
because sometimes your maps will become really elaborate. Okay, so I totally forgot what I was doing. Okay, we're going to the, um, the textures here. And we're going to load some textures from Barbershop. We're going to find some textures. I usually just go by what I can find that's appropriate for the map. Uh, because if you scroll through the maps for a single texture, it's going to take you a very long time. Okay, so you're going to have an option to pick from a DXT1 texture or a shader or some other texture, but you basically just want to pick the shader because that will contain some other additional information that's packaged into this one little shader thing, like bump, a bump mapping, specular mapping, uh, other stuff like that. So I'm going to select this wall, I'm going to right click, and then I'm going to um, select select services and adjacent walls and you're gonna have to um, move something around in the in the just move your camera around or it's not going to refresh and it's gonna it's gonna be, be like it's trying to load something but it really isn't so we're gonna apply the shader sorry you know what I forgot to select the select the surfaces in this room here for some reason it didn't select both of the wall textures uh, in both rooms we're gonna to try to do that so let's try this again all the all adjacent that didn't work did it adjacent code planner I'm gonna select a surface in the uh, in the small room here select surfaces Adjacent walls. That really isn't working, is it? That sucks. Okay, so let's just um, apply this texture. And just select these manually. I'm holding down the control button to select multiple whatever surfaces. I'm going to right click, alignment, planner walls. And that's going to align it a bit better. This is the textures being displayed a bit. Uh, it, like stretched or expanded than it should be. So I'm going to go up to the texture pan, hold down the control button and the left and right mouse button and resize it so that all of the texture is being dis displayed. I think that's as large as we can display the texture at uh, right there. Let's make sure that none of these bulbs are placed in the corner, corners of the the um, the walls here, because that just looks wrong. Good. I'm going to select the ceiling, and we're going to look for a ceiling texture. There's one. I had to actually select all of the ceilings. Sorry. And resize them. And that'll do. Let's select the floors here and find a floor texture. The carpet floor textures are usually pretty small and hard to find. We can have uh, hardwood. There's some hardwood. That's actually for a static mesh, I think. Probably shouldn't use it as hardwood. I'm going to try to find a carpet. Here's a carpet. I'm going to uh, align first. So, planner floor and trig it. Good enough. Okay, so let's add some static meshes. So I'm going to load uh, barbershop meshes and just add some random stuff in there. Let's add a lamp in the corner here.
and I'm gonna right click and add an actual light next to it. Oops. I'm gonna put it right inside the, the mesh there and see what happens. The mesh will actually block the light and uh, filter it out in some way. So let's um, change this up. Go to light color, color, and select a, a more yellow color. Basically just double click on any actor and the, ins the inspector will open up and display its properties. Okay, so we're gonna add a few more static meshes. So we've got this wall here, uh, divider. And when you add these meshes, go into your, your side view and align them to the floor so that they're not like raised off the floor or inside the floor or anything like that. You'll have certain static meshes that are like decoration. Sometimes it's just like dirt. Sometimes it's like a, a whiteboard like this. So I don't feel like rotating that. So we're just going to um, put it on this wall. There's some of the um, the actors that are animated, so animated static meshes, and uh, it will just have like beetles running around in dirt or something like that. It's pretty cool. So we're gonna add a table and call it a day. So I'm gonna add a table in this room that's supposed to be a, a washroom, but I don't feel like putting that many static meshes in the um, in the video here because it's it's pre pretty straightforward. Okay, so let's add our player start. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to right-click the, the floor here, hit add player start. That's where we spawn. I'm going to right-click um, the floor again, hit add officer start. This is for a single player. And these are the four officers that, um, the AI officers that help you out. So you've got red start two and blue team. You want to make sure that they can all spawn. And we're going to add a door frame in there. So I'm going to go to my static meshes, hit load, and select doors. We, we want to add something wood-like. So here's a, here's a wood kind of frame. Let's add that. Whenever you make door doorways, you should always put the door frames in there. Otherwise, it, it's just going to look pretty wrong. I'm going to uh, rotate this and align it in top view. Lines up pretty perfectly. And we're just going to, um, oops, I'm just going to have to raise this up a bit. Everything looks good. Now let's actually add a door in there. So I'm going to go to navigation points, door, SWAT door, single door. And this is kind of like a special actor that has a static mesh applied to it and it's visual in the map. So add single door. This is a locked group and we're not going to unlock it just, just yet because I need to rotate it. So I'm going to right click on the door and we're going to set the pivot point. So place pivot here so I can rotate it in a decent manner. And we're going to rotate the door. I'm just trying to move it right now with the, with the rotate thing. That's obviously not going to work. Okay, let's go into top view, further align it. Good. Now I'm going to double click on this door here and we're going to change the static mesh. So let's select a static mesh uh, door that's appropriate for this map. Didn't I say that I was going to make a, a washroom out of this? I never, never really, really did. There. A women's uh, washroom door. We can, we can use that. So I have the static mesh selected. 
let's go into display here and um, hit this arrow down at, on the static mesh property and hit use and on the other side it's gonna have dames and I suppose I can rotate that um, let's do that I'm gonna have to realign it unfortunately okay I think that will do so these points here let's take a look at this the SWAT team they need to stack up on the doors properly they need to know where to go and that's what these yellow things are the stack points for the left side of the door I think that's what the L stands for I didn't really know there was a left and right to be honest there's really just this room and that room but it's left and right in our case um, so let's uh, try to unlock this gonna have to go into the group browser look at our groups right click on this and hit unlock okay in these these red ones here these are clear points and this is where the SWAT team uh, they move to when they clear a room so make sure that they are positioned in a way that they see everything in the room otherwise they're going to rep report a clear room when there's actually portions in the room that could possibly have a suspect that nobody sees so just spread them out around the room oh yeah and make sure that the numbers correspond properly to the to how they're moving through the door it's something that you'll pick okay so this is the map here let's take a look at it so I've got my enemy behind this what what you may call it and we're just gonna get the SWAT Element. team to Drop deploy a flash. A flash. Suspect spotted. I was hoping they would. This guy wouldn't walk up there to deploy the flash, but unfortunately, he did. Drop your weapon. Get those hands up. Hey, hey! No more trouble from me. Ooh. Let's get the uh, SWAT team to open, bang, bang, and clear, open and clear this washroom here. here we go. Here's my uh, handheld pickup. Down. Down. Damn it! It's clear. No visible threats. Reynolds clear. Moving on trailers. Clear. Area clear. Jackson, I'm clear. So I, I got them to all kind of get into that room, which is pretty good. There's the explosive, and there's the dummy. You can kick them around and stuff. Usually I can push him. I, I think I just put him too far into the ground. Yeah, his, his foot's caught. You've got your whiteboard up there. And our lamp. Now my lights are all kind of... My ceiling lights are not really configured right, so it's nothing's really going to look right. So let's um, see the clear points. So I'm going to close this door. Open, Ready, bang, bang, and clear. Open and clear. Regroup and follow me. In position. They're gonna stack up. Bang it. Go when ready. I'm on it, boss. It's kinda of hard to get them to go into position because it's so tight. Move it down. So far so good. Moving forward. Trailers. Fields. And they're gonna move to their clear, clear points. Yeah. So everything worked out fine. I'm gonna try to kill them. Officer down. Stop him now! Uh, Leads been injured. 